Hi, everybody. How are you guys? I hope you are doing well. Welcome. It's Tuesday. How are you doing? <laughs> How are we doing out there? Is everybody feeling good? I hope that you are. I hope that you're having a good week so far. It is only Tuesday. We've still got a ways to go, but you know what? We get to be together today, and that's what that's what counts, right? That's that's what counts. Hope to put a little smile on your face today. So, how is everybody doing out there? I am doing good. I'm working on um, so many different things. Got a lot of things going on on my plate, but I can't complain, right? It's all good things, all good things. So, I hope that's true for you as well. Oh, hello to all my Facebook fam family making their way in. Hi, Letitia. Hi, Susie. And hi to my YouTube family as well. <laughs> Didn't mean to leave you guys out. It's good to see all of you. Kathy's in the house. Colleen is here. Hello, Judy. Hi, Valerie. Anita. It's so good to see everybody. All right, let's do a little housekeeping, shall we? And then we're going to get right into this project. I hope you're going to like this project. I think it's going to be pretty. I have not executed the entire thing. So there's always a chance that things could go off the rails. But I mean, that's what makes life interesting, right? <laughs> At least with jewelry. I don't know that that's true with real day-to-day -day life. But um, I mean, you know, we, we can always troubleshoot together. But yeah. So, all right. Let's talk about a couple of things. So uh, it is Tuesday, which is our regular life. However, it is the beginning of the month, which means that Hardwired is open for enrollment. <laughs> That's all I need to say, right? And then do the little, yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Hardwired is open for enrollment. And that means that you are more than welcome to come and join us and we would love to have you. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with my uh, hardwired group, that is my paid Facebook group. You have to uh, pay to be a part of that group. It is uh, very affordable though, I will say that. Um, and it is a completely private group. And it is a group where we do upper level beginner to intermediate style projects. So it's a little bit harder than anything that we do here during our regular lives in the community. Uh, in, in other words, we do a lot of wire weaving. Uh, we do a lot of those basics and, and building on the wire weaving. We do some projects that sometimes take a little more time than what our projects here take. Um, so for instance, last week we did a project that we started it on Tuesday and we finished it on Thursday. So uh, sometimes the projects are longer in length. Um, they are definitely harder, but I don't want that to keep you away from the group because I, I don't want you to be intimidated by that. Uh, we try very, very hard in the hardwired group to keep things accessible for everybody, meaning uh, whatever your skill level is, as long as you've got some basic wire skills and just some basic jewelry making skills, uh, you are you should be good to go. I try very hard to break everything down and make it easily um, easy to learn. So uh, if you've ever thought about being a hardwired member, uh, now's the time. Now's the time because we're only open for enrollment at the end of the month in the beginning of the next month, right? So we want you to come and be a part of that group with us. Uh, we, like I said, are only open for a limited amount of time. And then we shut down the window and open back up again for enrollment uh, at the end of the month. And it's a lot of fun. It's a small group setting. So we're sometimes here on the lives uh, combined with Facebook and YouTube. Sometimes we have almost 400 people during a live. Then hardwired is much, much different than that. Sometimes we have 40 people. We usually, we usually top out right around 45 people. The group is bigger than that, but for an actual live, the people who are able to attend the actual live, it's right around 40 to 45 people. And then everybody who can't make it to the live watches it on the replay. So you don't have to make it to the live. But the point that I'm trying to make is, is that it is a very small group, uh, which means that there's a lot of camaraderie, friendship that goes on there. A uh, lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with each other and uh we we play hard but we also work really hard as well uh it's it's an amazing group of some of the most talented people i have ever met in my entire life and it blows me away uh when i see the pictures 
of the things that y'all post in that group. So if you've ever thought about it, let this be your sign. Come be a member of the Hardwired group. Uh, and uh, just a gentle reminder to all of you who are a Hardwired member, that also means that since we're open for enrollment, you've got an invoice in your inbox. If you haven't taken care of that already, it is there. I'll remind you again this afternoon. Uh, speaking of this afternoon, Hardwired will be meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon for our weekly project. We're doing a throwback project. We're making some wire spiders, which is always a lot of fun. It means we're just very, very cautiously inching our way to the wire wrapped pumpkins that we do every year. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> all right. All right. So anyway, uh, yeah. That's, that's open for enrollment, so please come and hang out with us. If you want to be a member of the Hardwired group, you just go over to that Facebook group and apply. Uh, you can pay quarterly or monthly to be a member, and like I said, it is super affordable. I think that you will really enjoy it if you're not there. <laughs> Cohen said, spooters, right? We're making wire spooters today. <laughs> All right, but for here and now, what we are making, <clears throat> excuse me, we're putting together a fun necklace project today that's got a little bit of everything in it. And I, I'm, I'm here for it. So I, since I have a master maker show on Monday afternoons now, it kind of throws off my creative vibe that I have on Mondays, right? It kind of throws everything off. So what ends up happening is I get the hardwired project ready to go. Then I do master maker and then it's time to come up with a project for our community. And a lot of times by the time I get to that point now that I have that extra master maker show in there, I'm like, oh no, what do I do now? I've done all the things, right? And it's hard to come up with things. So this project did not come to me until very, very late last night. And I was like, pulling out things here around the desk and I was like you know what I'm just going to combine some of my favorite things and create something pretty and those kinds of projects always go over really really well so that's what we're going to do today we're going to create a fun necklace this is not hard at all we're going to improvise um we've got some head pins that we're going to turn into eye pins because I don't have any eye pins so we're we're going to improvise a little bit uh, I'm using a green girl studio pendant I'm using some Tierra cast cord ends. I'm using some leather cord USA leather and I'm using some beetle on artistic wire. So this has got a little bit of everything in it. Plus the beads are just yummy and beautiful. And I'll tell you where you can grab those as well. Uh, so if you want to, let's get started. Shall we? I'm going to turn you around. Whoops. <laughs> We're going to right to it. This tripod is really loose. Can you tell? All right, let's see if we can tighten everything up a little bit. There we go. All right, so let me show you all the things we're going to use. All right, so from my stash, I have this Green Girl Studio Flying Heart Pendant. And guys, if you don't are not familiar with Green Girl Studio, please go check them out. Uh, I believe that Nicole has got a link for Green Girl Studio if you want to go check them out. They're all hand uh, created, uh, pendants. They have other things as well, but I have a, I have a collection of green girl studio pendants that I absolutely love, but it's just like some of the other things that I absolutely love. They just kind of sit in a little spot on my desk and I never use them. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to grab one of those pendants and use that. So this is the flying heart. Now, when I checked out the Green Girl Studio website, I don't think they had any, at least last night, they didn't have any, any in this antique brass color. However, they did have some into the silver color and I think they had two different sizes. So if you're interested, uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, again, I don't know that they have any more of this one, but that doesn't mean that you can't find it elsewhere. So you can grab Green Girl Studio stuff from Green Girl Studio, but then there, are, they also have some vendor contracts with some other places. So uh, definitely check your favorite place to shop online for beads because a lot of times they've got some Green Girl Studio pendants as well. So you might get lucky um, if you want this one in this antique brass color, but I love it. I love it. Super, super cool. It's a heart with all kinds of texture. It's got the wings on it. It's sewn up on the back. It says love gives wings. It's just a super cute little pendant. So that is going to be our focal for our project. Okay. Then we're going to use some beads and the beads that we're going to use, I actually got from Michael's a while back, but I'm pretty sure that they still have these. Um, they're not that old. So they're semi-precious gray agate six millimeter beads. I don't know why they call them gray agate. 
I mean, they are gray and they are agate, but the part that I love about them is that they have this really cool kind of rainbow effect to them. And it makes them better than just gray, right? Because I mean, sometimes gray can be a little bland. This is not, this has this beautiful color shift that's really not even coming across on camera, nearly as pretty as it actually is in real life. But that's what I'm using. So I'm going to use some six millimeter beads for that. I'm going to show you one side of this I've already created. I also have a larger one that's faceted, which Danielle actually got me from Tucson. I also think this is one of those gray agates as well. It's just faceted. I could be wrong. But uh, so we're going to we're going to put together kind of a little beaded chain of our own with some big links. Well, they're just large jump rings, but. We're going to do that on either side. So one side's already done. We're going to do the other side together. Then we are going to use some Leather Cord USA. I have this really cool kind of smoky gray that goes really well with those beads. And I'm also using some Tierra Cast cord ends. These are some of my favorite cord ends from Tierra Cast, also in this antique silver. You can see you can put flat suede in them if you wanted to, or you can put two ends of leather cord in it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I've got my Tierra Cost cord ends, my Leather Cord USA. And then last but not least, we're going to create our own little, our own clasp for this, which we're going to do out of artistic wire. We're going to flatten it and hammer it just a little bit. It's just a thicker artistic wire. We're going to do a barrel knot. It's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> it's going to be a whole thing. Stick around, you know. <laughs> I just thought it was fun because we're really kind of combining a lot of my favorite things together. And you can't go wrong when you do that, even if you don't know exactly what the end result is going to look like. So let's get started with this. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create our little beaded chain because we've got one for one side. We need to create one for the other side, right? I'm using some of those beautiful gray agate beads, and I've got those on eye pins, and they're all connected with some large jump rings. Here's my issue. So my issue is I don't have any antique brass colored eye pins, and I do have like antique brass colored artistic wire, obviously, because we're going to use that for our clasp. But I was like, you know what, what, what do you do if you don't have any of the wire, right? If you don't have any of the wire, all you've got is head pins. How do you improvise? Well, you take these really long uh, head pins and you turn them into eye pins. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cheat a little bit. Okay, so we're going to use these. We're going to cut them off and turn them into our own eye pins. So I'm going to grab a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to cut these up. Now, fortunately for me, these are the really long head pins. So I've got plenty of wire to spare. But you could do this with like your two inch ones as well. So don't worry if you don't have the extra long ones. But just in case you're ever in a pinch, right? I'm also using my stepped bell making pliers today which is one of my very favorite pairs of pliers from Beetle On. You can, you can create six different sizes of loops. I do love my small and large bell making pliers for the same reasons, but this is just a really cool tool that has both of them, you know, combined. So that's what we're going to be using. All right. So what we're going to do is just like I said, we're going to take our head pin and we're just going to cut it off, cut the head of the head pin off. And we're going to create our own eye pins. So I'm going to take the smallest barrel of the steps bell making pliers and I'm just going to grab that wire where I cut the head off and I'm just going to turn a loop, right? So I've turned a little loop and then I need to break the neck so that I can center the wire up. And essentially I'm just, just bending the wire just a little bit to create my own eye pin. You definitely want to be sure that you get a good closure on that, which you may not be able to do until after you get your regular pliers in here. So let me show you. So there, if I wiggle it over a little bit better, I've got a good closure on that. Okay. 
Now I've got an eye pin. Now I know that's pretty easy, but sometimes when you're like trying to put something together, let's say you've got a show coming up, you're, you're going to do a craft fair. You've got to get some stuff together really quickly. You've got last minute and like, Oh no, what do I do? I'm out of eye pins. <laughs> just make your own. If you've got some head pins laying around or just regular wire as well. Right. You don't have to, you don't have to tear up your head pins. I just thought it was fun. Yes, we did. Kathy says, cut its head off and break its neck. We're being kind of vicious with our wire today. <laughs> We're doing all kinds of terrible things. All right, so I'm going to thread on three of the gray agate beads, and then I'm going to just do a simple loop on the other side. So I'm going to grab the wire. I'm going to bend it, and then I'm going to come in with my cutters. I'm going to trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch of wire, and then I'm going to use my round nose pliers, or in my case, my stepped bell making pliers to create my loop on one end. Okay. Jill says, is there a way to take a wire and turn it into a flat head pin? Yes, you actually can do that. It's called riveting and it's a pretty cool process. So basically what you would do is you want to take your piece of wire. You can do this with probably 22 gauge and up. It's really difficult to do this with thinner gauge wire, but basically what you do is you take your wire and you actually hammer the very tip of it to splay the end, essentially creating a rivet, but you can, you can use that as a head pin if you want to. The only thing is, is that they're not necessarily consistent. You're probably better off to use like bare copper or silver and melt a ball onto the end, which we never do here because I don't like to use fire uh, on camera because I have a tendency to, you know, I don't know, set the house on fire. Never done that, but you guys have seen me burn projects. <laughs> so we generally speaking don't use a lot of wire. I mean fire, but you most definitely can use a hammer to splay the end of your wire. But again, you want to use a wire that's thicker than, say, 22 gauge to do that, just, just so you know. Uh, you definitely can look all of that up on YouTube. We've not ever done it here. But yeah, <laughs> Kathy says, I didn't know jewelry making was so violent. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So we are going to do this six, well, five more times so that we have a total of six of these. So we're taking another head pin, trimming off the head, and then we're just going to create our loop or our eye for our eye pin. So I've created the loop and then I'm going to break its neck, which is terribly violent, by just giving it a slight little twist. And what that does is it helps to center up that wire underneath your loop. What happens though is a lot of times it will open your loop so you've got to close your loop back. Okay then I'm going to thread on three beads and we're going to trim off. All right grabbing the wire, bending it where it's exiting the bead, coming in with my cutter tool, trim off, leave yourself about a fourth of an inch of wire, and then going to create your loop. I cut my wire a little short on this one. We may have to, oh, that'll work. It's just a small loop. <laughs> okay, so there's two. <clears throat> All right, and the cool part about this is if you're using these long three inch head pins, Look at the leftover wire I have. So I can make more eye pins out of these if I wanted to. I can just make shorter ones. So I'm definitely not throwing away my scraps. I'm setting that to the side because I can use those for other things. All right. So I'm going to turn my loop and then break the neck on it. I'm going to add three more beads. Okay, we're going to do a simple loop on the other side. Now, I honestly could be doing wire wrapped loops here if I wanted to. I've got enough of this wire, enough of the, um, the, the eye pins, well, the head pins that I'm turning into eye pins. I could, I could actually do a wrapped loop on both sides. There's enough wire here to do that, but I'm just keeping it 
keeping it pretty straightforward. I'm not trying to overcomplicate, right? I'm just making some loops. Okay. All right. It's funny because you turn your loop and then you turn it back just a little bit to, to try to even up your wire, which is not always centered, but as, as close as you can get it is fine. <laughs> Renee says, I've learned all my violent jewelry making habits from Sarah. <laughs> That's too funny. Too funny. All right. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Now we're going to use our bell making pliers, or you can use your round nose pliers. All right. It doesn't matter. I just have the bell making pliers out because I'm going to use these for our clasp. So I figured, you know what? Why not just use them for our loops as well? May as well because I don't usually <clears throat> use them for my loops. I normally just use my round nose pliers, but just just to show you that you can these are pretty versatile tools you can use for a lot of different things okay hi gabriella gabriella you have the most beautiful name So pretty. All right. Roll back to close up our loop. Hi, Michelle. Okay. We're going to do one more. And then we're, we are going to do a wrapped loop with our larger bead here with one of these. So I told you you could. And I'm going to show you that you can. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who came to yesterday's Master Maker. Um, it's going to be a fun month. We're, we're working on uh, macrame for the month. And it's one of my favorite things. Macrame and pearl knotting. Those are two of my very favorite things other than working with wire. So I'm excited to... Uh, do a whole month of macrame so it'll be fun thanks for coming and hanging out i hope that uh, if you didn't make it get to, a chance to be there that you will set your reminders for next monday at 4 30 p.m for my monday edition of master maker and of course i will still be with you guys on friday uh, for our feel good friday show and for the friday edition of master maker as well Ooh, Renee watched last night and bought the buttons, right? The buttons were fantastic. Wanda, <laughs> you crack me up. Wanda said, I just got here. Could you please start over again? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So I've done six of those because that's how many it's going to take. We've got one side done. We're going to do the other side. So it's 12 total. Uh, I do need to wire wrap our larger bead here, though. So I'm going to take another one of these extra long head pins. And just like I mentioned, we're going to do a wrapped loop on it. So <clears throat> I'm going to come down on that wire after I cut the head of it off. And I'm going to bend the wire. I'm going to come in with my, this time I am going to use my round nose pliers. Use my round nose pliers, take the wire up and over rotate the wire or rotate the pliers so that I can take the wire over to the other side. And then I'm going to wire wrap in that space. Yes, the beads are six millimeter beads. And the, um, the head pins that I'm turning into eye pins are 22, 21 gauge, I believe, I believe. It's either 21 or 22. Either one will work. All right. So I made my wrapped loop out of what used to be a head pin. We're going to thread on our bead. And then we're going to do another wrapped loop on the other side. So grabbing the wire where it exits the bead, bending it over the top of the pliers. 
right? We are going to, Renee, they are, I got these from Michael's a while back. They are gray agate, but they have that beautiful like rainbow effect to them. But they are gray agate, six millimeter uh, bead landing. Got them from Michael's and it was two, you can see. So I've only used one strand. It was a two strand. All right, so grabbing the wire, my round nose pliers are going up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then we're gonna wire up in that space. You're welcome. And then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim off. So you can see I, I did a wrapped loop with one. Uh, even though it originally was a head pin. Just goes to show your, your materials can be used in so many different ways, you know? If you run out of something, don't worry. You, you've probably got something else that'll work, you know? All right, so we've got a little, our little wrapped loop bead here. Okay, we can put our little beaded chain together now. So <clears throat> you can see it starts out with our larger bead and then a large jump ring and then two of our little beaded links. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take these larger jump rings, twist to open, I'm gonna thread on my bead and then I'm gonna thread on two of my little beaded sections and then twist to close that back. Okay, I'm gonna open another jump ring And then I'm going to thread that jump ring onto the loops on the opposite ends. And then before I close that, I'm going to add two more. Twist to close that. Okay, we're going to do another one. I'm going to add our two beads. And then we're gonna close this back. And last but not least, we're gonna finish this off with one more large jump ring. Whoops. Okay, I'm gonna twist to close that back. All right, so we've made our little beaded chain. You're gonna do the exact same thing for the other side. So we've got two little beaded chains. This would make a really pretty bracelet too, by the way. Um, I think it would look really nice as a bracelet. I like that, I like that a lot. It's just a cool way to kind of double strand without it actually being a double strand, you know? I mean, cause sometimes double strand stuff be a little frustrating especially if you're mixing your bead sizes together so this was a quick and easy little way to put together a, a, the double strand look without it actually being a double strand okay so these are going to come down and we are going to connect with our pendant here now i'm going to use another jump ring this one's actually much bigger so i've got one really large jump ring to connect everything together. However, you could use just one of your larger jump rings. These I believe are 10 millimeter jump rings, by the way, if you're curious. So if you wanted to do another 10 millimeter in the middle here to bring everything together, you absolutely could. You don't have to have like this monster sized jump ring. That's not necessary at all. I just happened to have a really big one, so I thought I would use it. All right, so I'm gonna open. I'm gonna thread on my pendant. My pendant, by the way, I'm using two six millimeter jump rings to connect it. You don't have to do the double jump rings. I just kind of like the way that it looks, particularly when I'm using some really big pieces here. It just kind of balances things out a little bit more. A single six millimeter jump ring here was just a little on the light side. So I doubled it up just to, just to try to even out the feeling of the weight. It's not an actual weight issue. It's just a visual kind of weight. So um, just tried to visually make that a little bit more balanced. All right, I'm gonna thread on my bead on each side, and then we are going to close this big monster jump ring back. Make sure we've got a really good closure on that. And then I'm gonna lay this out so that you can see 
how pretty this looks. I love that. I think it came together really beautifully, right? That looks really good. So you can see a little bit more of it. All right. So for the length part of this, I wanted to get a little bit, a little bit more creative. So <clears throat> we are going to take some of that leather. The leather is going to be the length, but more importantly, um, I wanted to create my own clasp and my clasp is going to go here. It's probably not going to attach to this jump ring just because I want it to lay flat. So I'll probably use a, another jump ring in between here as our go between to hook this to. But we are going to create a little hook and we're going to flatten it and we're going to give it a little texture because who doesn't like to hammer? It's good for the soul. Then we're going to do a little knot to attach it. So I'm going to set all of this to the side. Okay. And we're going to work on our clasp first. All right. So I'm going to use very large artistic wire in this antique brass color. I was considering using the regular brass color and I was like, I don't know. I, I kind of like it a little darker. So, uh, but I honestly think either one would look fine. So it's just whatever you, whatever you've got on hand. Now, as far as the gauge of this wire is concerned, I believe this is 14 gauge. I could be wrong. Uh, it could be a 16. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure this is bigger than 16 gauge wire. All I know is that for this type of class, because I'm going to flatten it and give it a little texture, I do need the wire to be a little bit thicker, right? So I would not recommend doing this with like a 20 gauge or an 18 gauge because it's just not quite thick enough. You really do need something that's a little bit more substantial. It's got a little bit more surface area on it. Okay, so I'm going to use my bell making, my stepped bell making pliers here. And <clears throat> I'm going to first step, I'm going to create the, the little loop and then we're going to do the shepherd's hook and then another loop. Okay, so we're going to start here and work our way around. So I'm going to use the smallest mandrel of my step to bell making pliers. I'm going to grab the end of the wire and I'm going to turn. Now this is thick wire, so it takes a little extra strength to do this, but turn that first loop on the wire. Then I'm going to place this into the back of the steps bell making pliers and now I'm going to use the largest mandrel you can see though there's no room in between there that wire is literally sitting right up against the edge of the tool I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to go up and over large barrel just like so to create that shepherd's hook look look right open that up just slightly Okay, and then I'm going to do another loop and I'm going to come down just a little. So I don't want to do it just right here. It's a little too compact for me. I wanted this to be a little chunky. So I am going to come down a little bit. I'm also going to use the next step up on the tool. You can use the, the small one again if you want to, but I am going to go that next step up. And I'm just holding the wire in the tool and I'm just going to bring that wire around. And I may have to adjust just a little bit. Mm, that might be too big. Let's come back in with the, the smaller pliers and make it a little smaller. There we go. All right, now I'm going to cut off, right? I'm going to trim off the wire. Try to trim, whoops, try to trim as close as you can get it to where those two wires are meeting. Okay. So I, I started out with the larger of the two small and, and ended up going with the smaller. It just looked better. <laughs> All right. And making sure I've got a good closure on that. Okay. Now you can see this one's a little short compared to the other one. This one, it's just slightly shorter. I don't think it matters that much, um, but if you want it to be bigger, obviously you're going to come down a little bit further on the wire before you make your loop going this direction. But this will work just fine. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my block 
And I'm going to use my chasing hammer, which we normally don't use. I normally use my nylon hammer for everything, but that's because the nylon hammer will uh, just work harden. Whereas our chasing hammer, we can create texture and we can flatten. So we're going to use this flat end to actually flatten our, our piece. So I'm just going to hold it in place. And you can see how I'm flattening that wire out. So it once was a round wire and now we are giving it a nice flat surface. Okay, so there's one side. The other side has flattened itself just by way of being on the other side, but you can give it a little more if you want to. All right, now this also has work hardened this a lot. This is now one of the strongest pieces of wire ever. Like this could probably hold up. I don't even want to guess. There's no telling how much strength this would hold. But now that I've made the surface a little bit flatter, and wider, I'm gonna give it a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna use the round end and I'm gonna give it a little, a little texturizing. And really all this does is it just creates some little dimples on the wire, which just gives it a little extra something. It doesn't change it a whole lot, but it, I mean, more than anything, it's just fun. <laughs> Was this a soft temper wire? Yes, this is an artistic wire in a really thick gauge. So it is a dead soft wire. How fun is that, right? I mean, it's just a little something different. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. It doesn't take a lot to texturize. How thick does it need to be to make a secure, a secure clasp? I would do um, 14 gauge or thicker. Um, uh, you can use an 18 gauge wire to make a clasp, obviously, but if you want to make it flat and then texturize it, you're definitely going to need a thicker gauge wire. So I would say 16 gauge or, or thicker. Um, but just to make a cool clasp in general, you can use 18 gauge wire and then you just want to work harden it a little bit. Um, but you really don't have as much surface area to flatten and texturize. All right. So I know it's not a huge change, but it's just it's just cool. <laughs> it's to, to me, it's just cool. Okay. So one of the things I do want to do though, is I want to be sure that you can see how it's just slightly open right there. I do want to try to close that loop if I can. At this point, it's really, really strong. That's about as closed as that's going to get. Okay. Which I'm fine with. And then this one as well, if you want to close it. It's just a matter of kind of wiggling it back and forth and pushing it together. There you go. All right. Now it might not be the most beautiful clasp in the whole world, but it was fun. <laughs> and that's all I care about. It was fun. It was fun. All right. So now what we're going to do, we are going to take some of our leather cord here. And I don't know for sure how long um, my cord is going to be. Uh, but I do want it to be doubled over. So I'm going to thread this uh thread my clasp on then i'm just going to kind of eyeball so basically i'm going to take this and then kind of put it around my neck which i know you can't really see at the moment but okay so it's about as long as i want it to be trim off here and then i'm going to use the the rest of this to create a little barrel knot here. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this obviously, but um, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an extra piece of, of leather. Now you can do this all with the same piece of leather that you've got here, but I, I don't, I don't want to do any of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shorter piece of leather. Okay. And I'm going to lay it across my, my leather cord that's folded in half at my clasp. Right. And then I'm going to, hold on a minute. I think I'm doing this backwards. I always mess this up. I always, always mess this up. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half. Okay. I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to lay it across and you can lay it this direction. Or you can lay it. It makes absolutely no difference. Okay. Then I'm going to take my leather cord here. And I'm going to wrap around all of that. So I'm going to kind of wrap around just like this. And I'm going to wrap around like three times at the, at the, the least four times at the most. So I'm just kind of creating this weird little bundle. I'm going to take the tail end of that wire and I'm going to stick it through all of those little coils and then through the loop where we have folded that, that cord in half. Okay. And then I'm going to pull. I did it wrong, didn't I? I always do this backwards. I don't know why. Right, Wanda says, barrel knots frustrate me. I know, I mess them up almost every single time that I do this. I did it, the, I went through the, the coils the wrong direction, which is fine. So, so frustrating to me too. And I wanted to do, I wanted to do such a good job. I'm gonna take my, <laughs> let's try this again. I'm gonna go the other direction, okay? Let's go this way and then pull and then pull and you're kind of just going to want to squish with your fingers to kind of roll this i love the way these look but it always takes me two tries i don't know why it just does and i don't know why i'm like oh i'm going to do this in a live knowing that i'm going to mess it up but then you just tighten it down, right? By pulling both ends. Now the issue with this is that you don't want to pull your your length of your necklace, right? You just want to be pulling the opposite ends of the leather that you've actually used to tie the knot with. Okay, so I've got that. I do too, Paula. I love the barrel knots. I think they look so good, but I always, always mess them up. Now I'm actually going to hold the entire knot and I'm going to slide it down just to kind of make the loop where my clasp is a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to tug on this one more time to make this nice and tight. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off, uh, but I'm going to add a little bit of glue. Okay, and actually before you pull that down, you can actually, let me pull it back a little bit. So you can take a little bit of glue. I'm going to use my uh, hypo cement here, but you're going to take your glue and put the glue onto your, your base leather, right, right in there. And then slide your knot over the glue. That's helpful. Then if you'll take a little bit of that hypo cement on either side, it will dry clear. So, okay. Let that dry for just a little bit and then you can go ahead and trim your two ends off and you've just got the knot. Okay. Yes, there are a million other ways you can do that. Yes, other people can do it in one try. <laughs> but you know what? 
that's okay. It's okay. It just goes to show I am not perfect and I never claim to be. So we're going to let that glue set up for just a couple of minutes. Okay. That glue really needs to harden and dry about 12 hours. Um, but for the sake of the video, we're just going to let it get to sticky state. And once it's to sticky state, I'm going to go ahead and trim off. Then you can also add more glue to that. All right. So as this is getting to that sticky state, we're going to come to the other ends of our cord here. And we want to be sure that our ends are even. And I'm actually going to trim off a little bit. Whoops. So I'm going to trim those so that they are the same length. Okay. And then I'm going to use my cord in, my TR cast cord in for both of those ends to go into. Now they'll slide right in there. This is one of those cord ends that you can pinch a little bit, but I also like to add a little bit of reassurance, meaning a little bit of glue in there as well. Now, I don't like to use my hypo cement for this part. Uh, you can, but to me, it's just not quite strong enough. I like to use Gorilla Glue. It's messy, but I'm okay with it. Um, I'm going to just take a little bit if I can get the lid of this off, which is going to be a feat in itself, I can tell. But... If you like Hypo Cement or E6000, whatever you've got, go for it. I do prefer my Gorilla Clear Grip more than anything. Um, but use whatever you like, right? So I've just put a little dab of that on to a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm going to use a, a scrap piece of wire as well to pick up that glue. And then I'm going to put that down inside of the cord end. I just find that it's easier to do it this way than it is to try to squeeze that glue down inside there. It always makes a mess. All right, so there's that. Is the Gorilla Glue equal to the E6000? It's pretty close. Uh, the E6000 is a little rubbery for my, uh, for what I like. So that's why I like the Gorilla Glue. It's, uh, it is, it's still a rubbery kind of glue but it has like the most incredible bond. So it's super, super, super strong. Whereas the E6000 to me, if you pull on it, it stretches and it turns into this like this stretchy elastic weirdness. Um, the Gorilla Glue doesn't really tend to do that. All right, so I've got my glue down inside there. I'm going to put my two cord ends right down inside there. Now, very gently, because I don't want to mess up the beautiful texture that's on the outside of this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use my nylon jaw pliers. I'm just very gently going to squeeze this over those cords. Now, I've got a little bit of the glue kind of seeping out. I'm just going to clean that up. And again, you want to let this set about 12 hours. Don't wear this until it is completely bonded. Okay. All right. So I've got my cord end on one side. I've got my clasp on the other side. We are ready to cut off our ends. I'm going to trim those as close as I can. I do want to mention, please don't use your blue handled cutters to do what I'm doing. This is a bad set of cutters. <laughs> this is a dud set of cutters. You can tell I've got some really big, see where I've done things that I should not have done. This is a really dull old cutter. Um, your new cutters, please don't use these to cut leather or anything other than just wire. Okay. Uh, just do as I say, not as I do. Uh, but when you've got a worn out pair of cutters, it's free game, right? You can cut literally anything with it. I can even cut plastic with these, um, after I've destroyed them, but <laughs> just don't, just don't use your new ones. Okay. All right. So now that I've cut that off, there's a little, there's like a little tiny, weird little bit of that leather behind. Okay. I'm going to just very gently use another little tiny bit of my hypo cement. And that should stay. It doesn't take a lot of glue, right? Just a tiny bit is all you need. 
<laughs> don't use your cutters to cut things that you shouldn't be cutting. And I do it all the time and don't even think about it, which is how I end up messing up my cutters. But yeah. All right. Those are my scraps. Going to throw those away. <laughs> Right? Pamela says new cutters are like your mama's sewing scissors. She will threaten your life if you use them on anything like paper or anything else other than sewing thread. That's the same way you should be with your with your cutters as well. All right, so we've got our cord ready to go. Okay, so we're going to bring our necklace back in and we're just going to put all this together now. So uh, let's see. I'm going to use some little jump rings. It's not super tiny. It's a six millimeter, but I'm going to put a six millimeter jump ring over here and then I'm going to attach my tear cast cord end here. Close that back. That's just so that everything still lays flat. That, that go between jump ring makes number one, this large jump ring lay flat towards me and you get to see the beautiful cord end laying flat and that beautiful texture is facing towards me as well. All right. And then the same thing over here on this side. So on this side, I also want my clasp to be laying flat and facing me. Well, I can't use this jump ring to do that because it's going to twist both of those pieces. So I need a, a go between jump ring. I don't know that this one is big enough to go over. It is not. So I'm going to need just a little bit bigger of a jump ring to, to clear this, this little loop that I've made here it won't clear this six millimeter jump ring. So let me see what else I've got here. No crying, Cooper. We don't cry in the studio. <laughs> no crying allowed in here. All right, we're gonna use an eight millimeter jump ring. I think that'll do it. Pretty sure. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so very quickly. We're going to use this jump ring here so that we can hook our clasp right onto that. It's still front facing and so is our big, right? Okay, cool. Now we're done. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to put this on the bust so you can see it because you can't see all of it. <laughs> it's kind of a mess right now. So let me turn you around. Okay. All right. Uh-oh. No, no. Stop. Stop. I've hit something and I don't know what it... There we go. Turning everything around and I hit something on the, on the screen. All right. So let's put this on the bust. Now, I'm only going to hold this up here for just a couple of minutes because the glue still has not quite dried and I don't want it to... I don't want anything to come undone but I still want to be able to show it off so that you can see how cool this looks. Hold on. Hmm. Something's acting funny here. Hold on a minute. Let's try this again, shall we? Getting things to lay flat here. Sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get everything to hang correctly. There we go. It's my, my leather is kind of twisting everything around a little bit. So there we go. I got it. Now you can see our little necklace now is a little on the long side on this bust, but this is a really narrow kind of weird uh, bust, but we've got that really cool flying heart pendant. We have our, um, our faceted beads and then our agate beads that are a little bit smaller that are not faceted, but it's still that really cool um, agate that's got that really crazy color shift in it. But then we have where I have this one twisted up here. We've got our tiara cast cord end there and then our little hammered clasp on the other side, which just gives it another little kind of, you know, it's just a little personalized touch to it. And um, 
the, because of the wideness of this, it's going to lay really nicely, I think, on your on your chest. This is definitely one of those kind of short necklaces that you want kind of up here. Um, so you may have to adjust your leather to get it exactly right. Because once you've got that leather on there, like you want to be sure you've got the right length before you commit to the glue <laughs> for sure. Right. This bust is the most horrible bust to test against though. Who is this narrow? Not me. I don't know. A three-year-old might be that narrow, um, but a regular person is not. So this is not really the most accurate representation of a person in the way this is going to lay. But you get a pretty good idea about what it's going to look like. Now, if you wanted to add other dangles and sparkles to this, you could. You've got all of these open jump rings that you most definitely could add dangles to if you wanted. Otherwise, I think it looks awesome just like it is. Uh, if you wanted to have like some chain hanging behind this uh, pendant with some other like sparklies, you could do that. Like you could really change this up a whole, whole lot if you wanted to. Or you could just leave it like it is because it's fabulous, right? It's got my favorite things, right? All of my favorite things here. We've got Beetle on Artistic Wire. We've got Green Girl Studio Pendant. We've got Tiara Cast Cord Ends. We've got just some really amazing beads. The colors of those was just really beautiful. So uh, I thought this was fun, right? We did a little bit of everything. We did some hammering. We did some barrel knotting. We did some stringing. We improvised and turned our head pins into eye pins. We did some wrapped loops and some simple loops. Just checking all the boxes today. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I thought it was fun and I think it turned out really, really well. I'm going to take a couple of pictures of it so that we've got some uh, photographic proof that this actually happened, right? I may put it over in my Etsy shop. I don't know. Uh, it's it's hard for me to let go of the Green Girl Studio pendants. You know what I mean? Plus the Tierra Cast Cordons. It's like, oh, I don't want to let those go, right? Um, I think everybody else is kind of feeling that way as well. But would anyone patina the heart? Listen, you could patina the heart. You could use some of those amazing paints and like just really kind of bring out the pattern that's on there. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that at all. And if you don't like it, you can always sand it off. So, I mean, just very gently, of course. Um, but yeah, you could most definitely patina that if you wanted to. No shame in that game at all, at all. All right, so that is it for me, you guys. I hope you have enjoyed today's project. Like I said, we did a little bit of everything. I like it when we do that, a little bit of everything. All right, so that is it for me. I'm going to go. Don't forget, guys, Hardwired is open for enrollment right now. Just go over to the group and apply if you want to be a member of the Hardwired group. Hardwired, we will be meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon for our weekly project. Guys, I'll be right back with you guys at 1 p.m. on Friday for our Feel Good Friday show. I've got some stuff for spooky season, right? Got some Halloween designs that I hope you guys are going to love in kit format. And then I will be back with you guys again on Friday at 4 p.m. for Master Maker. So you're not done with me. We're just getting started. This is just the first time you're going to see me this week. Okay. Hope you don't get tired of me. I love you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your afternoon and I will see you soon. Bye guys.